What up, everybody? It's Cinny, and this is Dark Souls 3. And today we're going to finish off the Sigurd and Patches event in the cathedral. And we're going to go back and kill some giant crabs. And we're going to go back to the swamp and get some stuff we missed. So at that point I already had uh, Sigurd's armor, but I wanted to show you where you can get it if you need it. You just have to go back to Patches, who is right across the bridge from where we uh, left him last, where he um, did that trap on us. He is right across that bridge, right outside of Rosaria's chamber. And he has Sigurd's armor for sale because he threw him down a freaking well and stole his armor. So you have to buy it back from Patches, and then you can throw it down to uh, Sigurd. And uh, that's part of the quest, Patches and Sigurd. And that'll be the last thing we do in the cathedral. So here we are at the Rosaria's Chamber bonfire in the Cathedral of the Deep. We got to run by the Booger Boys. Let's head down these steps here. And here is Patches, right across the bridge from where he did that dirty trick on you. Oh, yes, yes. Well, what can I do? Can't resist me, can you? <laughs> My sumptuous selection. So you just purchase item. He has red bug pellets, black fire bombs. He has all kinds of stuff. But down here. Towards the bottom, he has the Pierce Shield, Katarina Helm, and all of the Katarina set, and he got that from Sigurd. So I bought it back uh, off video. I just ran around a cathedral, killed stuff, made sure I hadn't missed anything, and I got enough souls to buy all of the Katarina armor. An unusual style of round shield, distinctly shaped helm worn by the Knights of Katarina. It's a Katarina helm, and it all says they all say the same thing pretty much. So uh, the second paragraph is always the same in most armors. Katarina armor, distinctively shaped armor worn by the Knights of Katarina, often ridiculed for its onion-like shape, infuriating the country's proud knights, but the masterfully Forge curved design makes it very effective for deflecting blows. And these are the gauntlets. Same thing, same description. And here's the leggings, same description. So if you buy all this armor from uh, patches, unbreakable patches here, and you throw it down to Sigurd in the well, then you'll progress that quest. You'll progress Sigurd's quest, and you'll have patches as a vendor back at the shrine, eventually. And he can help out with a, a quest with Grey Rat. And here's black leather armor. It is black dyed leather armor enabled its wearers to hide in the shadows with silent finesse. The wearer of this fine attire was admired by friends and enemies alike, for his skills were unmatched and his heart was true as gold. As their new owner, you have quite the shoes to fill. That's easy to read for me because it all says the same thing. Except for it changes boots, gloves, you know. Arrows with tip poison tips. You can flick poison damage. And that's like my favorite thing in the whole game, poison arrows. So I had to buy some of those. So now that we have uh, his armor, the Katarina armor, let's throw it down to him. And I just wanted to make sure I got a good look at patches here with the binoculars. Because I remembered I had them. 
and you can use them to uh, obviously to look far away and to get a good view of certain things without your big old noggin in the way. So let's head back to Rosario's uh, bonfire so we can go throw Seaward his armor. And man, there's no worse feeling than recording a whole hour of audio commentary. And then realizing when you're all the way done that your mic was not on. And I know I'm an idiot, but holy shit. That's so frustrating. But I'm going to man up and get it done here. Let's make sure it's on. Oh, it is. It's on now, of course. Now that I'm done, all the way. I'm redoing it. This is the second time through a whole hour of commentary. So I played the game, knowing I was going to do commentary later. Then I just, just did the commentary. <laughs> and it wasn't on. The mic wasn't on the whole time for a whole hour of commentary. And now I'm doing it again. So if I seem frustrated or, uh, you know... Just, I don't know. Anyway, let's try to do do good. So I'm going to put on all the Katarina armor, and we're going to walk slowly and throw it down the well and see what happens when we do that. And this will progress uh, Sigurd's quest and uh, patches. So here you see the full armor. I even put on the pierce shield. The only thing I'm missing is a Zwihanda. Boom, there's a special move of the Pierce Shield. So you walk slow. It's really, this equipment's really heavy. So I hear I'm going to try to roll for you. So you can see that. It's how hilarious that is. Oh, shit. Can't roll. Can't get off my feet at all. Guess if you have a better equip load than me, you could. Well, here, let's throw it down to Seagward. And we'll get naked automatically. Salute you. With my trusty suit of armor, I'll be out of here in a jiffy. Until we meet again, comrade. <laughs> no need to worry about me. With my trusty suit of armor, I'll be out of here in a jiffy. Until we meet again, my good friend. <laughs> no need to worry about with my trust. Until we meet again. <laughs> so we threw the armor down. He gave us a gesture, rejoice. And then he said, it'll be out of there in a jiffy, my good friend. A, a jiffy. Let's put our armor back on. We got the thief mask. We are wearing the Fallen Knight armor. The Master's gloves, because of a weight issue, pretty much. Master's gloves, just because they're light, 
and then uh, leather boots. And that's uh, something new I put on since the last time, I think, leather boots. So, full disclosure, I put on a little bit of different pants. So now let's go see what Patches is doing now that we threw the armor to Sigurd. So yeah, this is mostly just backtracking, getting items that I didn't get when I went through these areas the first time. We've done the swamp, we've done the cathedral, but now we've got most items out of the cathedral, and now we're going to go back and get items from uh, Crucifixion Woods. We're going to kill a couple giant crabs and get a ring, and then we're going to head back to the swamp, and we're going to pick up some scrolls for Orbeck, uh, Undead Bone Shard, uh, some cool armor kill another giant crab, kill a couple, actually four or five giant tree dudes. So spoiler alert, that's what we're doing. And here's Rosario, here's a nice little binocular look at her and her nice gross cover or whatever that is. Three some, I don't know. Is that coming out of her body? Oh, what is that? I don't even know. Is that part of her? Is that her gross living blanket of flesh? Is it a, is she having a threesome with two booger boys? I don't know. Is it one of these guys? I don't know what that is. It's pretty gross though. Here's Patches. Yes, he's still here. I just wanted to see if that was the trigger to, for him to move to Firelink or not, but it wasn't. It might be, but he's still here right now. If you go back to the shrine, he's still not there. You have to do one more thing, and I'll show that right now. So if you haven't already, make sure you got the tower key, because we're going to head up into the tower. So you have to buy that from the shrine handmade. But let's go see uh, if Patches is in his spot. That's not the way. There's Buttfinger. I think we're done with him. We already got the uncracked red eye orb by killing the Dark Wraith. That's what we did last video. If you want to see that quest. But here, this is where Patches will be when he goes back to Firelink Shrine. But he's not there yet because we got to do one more thing. We're going to go up in this tower where you use the tower key. No uh, seed. Here's where you use the tower key. Boom. Go up here. And let's go use the elevator. Nice view there. Go across this bridge. Go in here and go up in the elevator. And I'm going to be quiet so you can hear something. Did you hear that noise? Sounded like a door shutting or something. So, I already got the fire uh, keeper soul up here, but I double checked and made sure I had gotten it. And I wanted to make sure that the event was fully triggered, which it is once you hear that door noise. So, good view again. Guess that's what I was looking at. So, let's head down and see what that noise was. Go back down the elevator. The door's closed! What the hell? And I'm gonna shut up so you can hear who did this to us. Sorry, friend. Be more careful. By the gods, curiosity is gonna kill you, kittens. Some places are better left alone, you know. Oh, sorry. Am I a tad too late? No fear. There's beauty in death. Besides, you're surrounded by ladies. Every man's dream, right? <laughs> oh, 
No matter. I'll look after things. By stripping every last trinket off your corpse, you're gonna make some lucky customer very happy. <laughs> No matter by stripping you're gonna make <laughs> it was patches he closed the door on us and locked us in what a jerk man he's attempted murder on us twice and now i can't get this door open what am i supposed to do are we supposed to die should i dark sign should i use a homeward bone oh wait there's a shiny down there and what he meant by uh, being surrounded by ladies he meant that they're spire keepers this is where their grave is i think there's a bunch of dead firekeepers down there, so we're surrounded by ladies. Every man's dream, right? You can also jump off over here, I think, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to do the other side. I actually wasn't very sure. I kind of just YOLO'd this. Uh, you only live once, right? YOLO. Here we go. And I landed perfectly. So pick this up after you chug a lug a little bit to make sure you don't die when you fall the rest of the way. Firekeeper robe, firekeeper gloves, firekeeper skirt. And we fall the rest of the way. We're okay. What do we got here? Another shiny. One of the coolest rings in the game, an Estus ring. Alright, so let's see what that says. Right now, right here I'm looking for the Firekeeper hat, which there isn't one. I just, for some reason I wasn't paying attention, so you'll see me look through the helmets a couple times looking for the Firekeeper. Helmet that doesn't exist. Pretty cool, huh? But yeah, this is the next step of the patches quest. So you gotta go up in the tower where you use the tower key. Let them lock you in. Jump down, get your Estus uh, key, or Estus ring. Get your firekeeper stuff. And then he'll be at his spot. And I'll show you that here shortly after we read some descriptions and maybe I look for some hats that aren't there. Estus ring. Estus increases... Okay, Estus ring. A green ring crafted from shards increases HP restored by Estus flask. This ring was entrusted to a certain firekeeper, but in the end she never met her champion. And the ensuing tragic farce became a favorite tale of the masses. So it gives you more HP restored with it, each Estus flask. Now let's look for this non-existent helmet again. That sounds like fun. But also, uh, Patches does... Uh, he progresses Grey Rat's quest also. As in, Grey Rat lives longer if Patches is in the shrine. Which you'll see later on, not this video, but we'll do it later, hopefully. When we send Grey Rat out again, Patches helps protect him when he's pillaging so he doesn't die. And I don't know if it's his next pillage or the pillage after, but they're buddies and you, you have to have Patches in your shrine for Grey Rat to stay alive. But there is no Firekeeper helmet or hat or anything, so let's look at the robe. Firekeeper robe. Robe worn by the guardian of the shrine. The firekeepers were robbed of light to better serve as vessels for souls. Only those who cherished the writhing, searing darkness were given the keeper's black attire. Gauntlets. And I almost read that one, but that's not it. Firekeeper gloves. Manchettes worn by the guardian of the shrine. The firekeepers were robbed of the light. And it says the same thing, so I'm not going to read that again. Firekeeper skirt, skirt worn by the guardian of the shrine, and says the same shit again. 
should say something different, you know, keeps farts in, I don't know, the skirt blows up when you walk over grates and keeps farts from smelling too bad, I don't know. But that, they feel like they used to do more uh, different descriptions for each piece of equipment, but they probably didn't. And instead of using a homeward bone or dark signing or anything like that, I'm just going to run back to the bonfire because I need to take my dog for a walk. Here, yeah, poochie, poochie, poochie. Let's go for a walk, buddy. Just don't jump off the side. Come on, buddy. Anyway, let's go see Patches. He's going to be in his spot. This is where he'll be for the remaining of the game. Let's talk to him real quick. I'll shut up. Ah, look. You're alive. Now, hold your horses. Let's have a nice talk about this. I'll come clean. I did you wrong. I didn't mean it, though. Not one bit. Y you get these urges running the business and all, and, and I, oh, I, I hate myself for it. I do. You know what I mean. Terrible, really. But I can see you'll forgive me. You're alive, after all. And that's what counts. Right? Oh, for heaven's sake, no need to jest with a face like that. You're still alive, and I'm here groveling in the dirt, so to speak. Oh, I know. Here, a token of my sincerity. Right and proper, huh? We're just a couple of outcasts. Let's make the best of it. <laughs> ah, I see you've met Greyrat, the slinking rodent. But he did me a good turn back in Lothric Dungeon. Doubtless I should do something about that little dead. Well, maybe not. Well, I can hardly believe he's still standing. <laughs> ah, I see you've met Greyrat, the slink. Doubtless I should. Well. <laughs> So he tries to murder us twice, and we take a rusty gold coin, and we're fine with it. I did tell him no, it's not okay, but I still ended up with uh, him living. Because he's got those dank poison arrows, and I don't want to kill him, because I want to keep buying poison arrows, so I'll let him live. Gave me a rusty coin, so I guess it's okay. He tried to murder us twice. But that's the last time, at least. He tries to murder us, and he saves Grey Rat later, so... He kind of makes it up to you, but... You know, not really. Now let's go talk to, uh... What's-her-face? Uh, she doesn't like... There, here's Grey Rat, first of all. He has nothing new to say. Which surprised me. I thought, seeing Patches here, maybe he would have something new to say, but he doesn't. I can keep the ring as I can keep the <laughs> ring that I got ten hours ago. Thanks, bud. But she has something different to say. Here we go. Oh, good hollow. I'm afraid I must say Orbeka Vinheim is a cause of much consternation. He proclaimeth himself Lord of Hollows. If left alone, he may one day imperil thy rule. Fall to this matter yearly, else we are unraveled. Decisiveness is the mark of a true monarch. Orbeck of Vinheim is a cause of much consternation. If left alone, he may one day imperil thy rule. Fall to this matter yearly, else we are unraveled. So she doesn't like that we uh, brought Orbeck back here. She thinks that he's going to betray us one day and 
It's going to be bad to have him alive and around us. So she wants us to kill Orbeck. So Yuria wants us to kill Orbeck. And you can do that, and that will progress her quest, and she'll give you Dark Drift or something. But let's not do that for now, and let's talk to Orbeck next. Oh, you're back then. Again. I'm Orbeck of Vinheim, here to teach you sorceries. Let us begin with the basics. The ideal sorcerer bears the twin faces of the dragon. Oh, you could at least act as if you're paying attention. It is folly to claim lives recklessly, friend. Do not be tempted. No matter the victim's stature, every killing has a consequence. Even as I bloodied my hands, I never realized this simple truth. I was the very definition of a fool. I don't mean to seem overbearing, but have you forgotten? In exchange for my sorceries, you are to bring me knowledge in the form of scrolls detailing the secrets of sorcery. I hope you're not one to break a promise. I don't mean to seem overbearing, but have you forgotten? In exchange for the form, I hope. So he wants us to bring him scrolls, and that's what we're going to go do. And to do that, we're going to have to go back to the swamp. But first, we're going to head to the uh, crucifixion woods to grab a cool ring. So you see, Orbeck says, hey, don't be too hasty. Don't kill. Just don't just kill people. And Yuri is like, hey, let's kill this dude, Orbeck. So they both say different things about... You know, they kind of both know what's going on here. But that's all the new dialogue and all the exposition's over with. Let's go do some action in the Crucifixion Woods. I know we went through this area a long time ago, but we missed one thing that I want to get and I can't let it go. So let's go kill some giant crabs and get a cool ring. And after this video, we should be moving forward, progressing. I might do a tiny bit more backtracking, but it won't be a whole video's worth like this one. This I just wanted to get uh, Patches and Siegbert like, up to date, and I wanted to get Orbeck and Uria up to date, and I wanted to get a couple scrolls and some things I missed in the swamp, and kill these crabs right here. Let's have some crab fight. Let's fight some crab. Let's get some crabs. And he grabs me. That's his grab move. Don't really want that to happen, but couldn't help it there. What I like to do to fight these guys, and I just figured this out, when they spit at you, you can just keep attacking, and they'll get staggered, and then you can uh, do a critical attack. So I'll show you that here shortly. Right now I'm kind of trying to get a good picture of them. Just for fun, in case I want to use it as a thumbnail, since I'm trying to improve my thumbnail game, you know, as I've been saying. I try to improve every time, you guys, you know. At least every every month, I try to improve something small until I'm, eventually I'll be doing a lot better. Small improvements are the way to go. It all adds up. So right now, I'm trying to get my thumbnail game down. I know my audio is still not on, on top of its on top of the world and the best, but. I'm trying here. I'm doing new stuff with that too, so... I'm trying to improve, basically. But here you go, he's staggered, so you can do a critical attack. You just gotta hit his little uh, underbelly there enough times, and he'll get staggered, and you can do that critical, visceral type attack. So here's the other crab, pretty close by, so let's get him too. So what you want to do is wait for him to do the spit move and then just blow your stamina on, on his underbelly. And hope he's not doing the grab move. And that was the grab. He got me again.
But wait for him to spit, and then you just go ham on him. And I'm running away. I'm doing the panic rolls with the chug lug. The noob combo of the panic roll into the chug a lug. So here you go. He's spitting, so just keep hitting. Hit, hit, hit. Keep going. Blow your whole stamina. Get it back. Keep going, going, going. Who cares that he's spitting on you? And now he's dead. A lot of people dodge that spit. No reason. Just go through it. Great swamp ring. Alright, that's what I came for. And a Titanite Shard. So let's take a look at the Great Swamp Ring. Boost Pyromancies. Ring said to be chiseled from the bone of a flame salamander by blighted pyromancers living in the Great Swamp. Boost Pyromancies. It is believed that salamanders are the des descendants of demons born of the Chaos Flame from which pyromancy is also said to have originated. And the little crab baby's biting my butthole, but uh, we'll be okay. I killed his mommy and his daddy, so he's pissed off, so he can bite my butthole a couple of times. We'll be alright. And back to the shrine bonfire. We got what we wanted from the crucifixion woods. So if you're using pyromancy, that's pretty much a must. I'll boost your py pyromancies with pretty much no uh, penalty. Except for a ring slot. Next up, we head back to the real swamp to backtrack a little bit and pick up some important items that we need. Or that we want. You know, we don't need them, but we want them. We want to keep Orbeck around and we want to strengthen our Estus. And get a cool hat. And show off a soul farming technique that I have. That I haven't seen anybody else do before. And I know it's probably not optimized, but it's a good one for like early game. Baron Keep. This is the swamp. Put on your daggers, that way you can dash through the deep parts. You just use the FP move, the two hand it. And then you use the uh, R2, uh, or L2, sorry. My lefts and my rights mixed up. And here you go, you can dash through the deep swamp that normally makes you walk or roll slowly. And then get cursed by the spasilics. But you see, I'm just pretty much at running speed with this uh, FP move that never runs out. It doesn't matter if you run out of FP. Showed this in the last video with the giant fighting the giants. Or maybe the video before, I can't remember, in the cathedral. When he killed the giant, I just dashed through his legs back and forth and killed him. And I was using the same move. But we're on the hunt for shinies out here. Shinies that I missed the first time through. And the only thing I think we're going to have to backtrack for is that right there. That shiny up there. Because I missed it. But after this, uh, after this video, uh, we don't do much more backtracking in the swamp. Maybe like 5 or 10 minutes more and that's it. And that's because I just ran out of time in this video. Here's the first one. It is Repair Powder. Then there's this cave over here. I'm just following the perimeter. I went to the right after the bonfire, and I'm tracing the perimeter. Golden scroll. That's for Orbeck. Dashing through the curse fog. No big deal when you got this move. Still going along the perimeter. We're just grabbing any shinies we missed in the swamp. Some pretty important ones, like that scroll. Trying to see if I can find any more things that I missed. There's a giant tree dude. I don't know what the hell to call these things. A giant tree grew dinosaur sorcerer man. I don't know. A giant treant? Giant trent? A giant treant? Uh, a giant grew sorcerer necromancer? Giant dinosaur man I don't know what the hell is that I 
can't even. T what is that? Anyways, we're gonna kill him. We're gonna kick his ass and kill him. After he almost kills me because I'm trying to get a good look at him. I don't know what the hell that is. It looks like a tree guy. A tree giant. A tree gent. Well, let's go ahead and kill him. He shoots skulls. And he tries to hit you with his giant tree weapon. Alright, we got our bearings. Let's time to fight him. Let's get him. Our cell sword twin blades are gonna rip through his ass. Ooh, he stomps us, but he's almost dead, and there he goes. And kill this dumb slug that was trying to kill us while we were fighting the giant tree dinosaur Gru sorcerer necromancer. And what's this item in here? Let's kill all these slimes and see what it is. Another important item that we missed. Undead Bone Shard. It'll strengthen your Estus Flask's uses. So, I thought that was pretty important to come back and get. And the whole other half of this video is getting that and some other things. Back in the swamp. Now that we're doing the dagger... The dagger jack... The dagger dash. I see another shiny. Let's go get it. Titanite shard, no big deal, but we're grabbing everything we see right now. Plus we might need that for our daggers that we're going to use in our offhand, just for the dash move. I think I want to make them blessed daggers, that way we can recover health too. But our main weapon is going to still be the sharp sellsword twin blades. And here's another shiny. Estus soup, so at least you know where that is. If you're in the swamp and you need a Estus, there's some Estus soup to help you out. Let's continue along the perimeter, doing our dagger dash. Looking for shiny things. Watching out for Gru. There's a couple Gru. Let's just dash right by them. Screw them. There's a shiny over there. Well, let's go get it. See what it is. I have no clue. What is that? Actually, I do. This is the third time I've watched this fucking video, and I also played this. Ooh, I get backstabbed by the groove. Damn. Running the train on me. I think I have to kill them because there's too many and they're right up my ass. Ooh. Oh shit. Take a little drink. Get some distance. Bam. They will not win the trading with me. So they lose the trading of uh, hits and they're down and they're dead and now we can go see what this thing is over here another groove but we got the another scroll for Orbeck kill the spear groove I think there's like four types of groove if you don't count the giant ones there's a spear guy there's like a normal guy there's one that does a grab and then there's like one on all fours so that's what you get. And there's at least three of them. The normal one and the one that grabs you might be the same. There's definitely a spear guy. There's a sorcerer guy. There's one that's on all fours. And then there's one that grabs you. So I guess there is four different kinds of Gru. That's if you don't count the giant tree dudes. That I don't know if they're considered Gru or not. Right there. Look more like dinosaur tree ants to me. Either a tree or a dinosaur or a giant. I have no clue what to fucking call them. I, I'm gonna have to look it up now. Get a little too close with our binoculars trying to check them out, and then that one attacks us, so let's do the panic roll out of there. 
and I'll show you my soul farming technique for this area which is a pretty early area and uh, a soul farming technique I haven't seen anybody else show there's a titanite shard and I see some more shinies over there so we'll probably get those first but after that I'll show you this uh, soul farming technique let's grab these shinies oh shit it's another giant crab so it looks like we're going to be killing three giant crabs in this video. But right now we just need to get the hell out of there because we're low on Estus and we're low on health. And we got two or three Gru and a giant crab on us So let's and a giant tree guy. So let's go to the bonfire up here and regroup. Make sure this mic's still on because that was bullshit. That pissed me off. A whole hour of commentary down the tubes. It's just a mic off. <laughs> the sound of a mic that's plugged in but not on. And that's all. It's, it was wonderful. It made my day. It really did. So I get distracted by another shiny that's in here, so let's go check it out. I happen to see this one from way over there. And it's a Shriving Stone. If you infuse your weapon and you decide you don't want to be that infusion anymore and you want to uninfuse your weapon, you can use a Shriving Stone and it'll make it so you can infuse it with something else. It'll erase your infusion. Do the Dagger Dash. Back to the Crab. I don't know why I didn't just kill the Gru's on the way over, but I must have forgot. So let's get rid of these Gru's real quick. The on four Gru's. The doggy Gru's. I guess they dropped Titanite shards because they've done that several times. They've dropped several Titanite shards. Once again, we know how to kill crabs. We wait for it to spit and we just go ham. Hard as a motherfucker. Boom, boom. Boom. He hits me, no big deal. Boom, boom. Go through his spit, who cares? Staggered, critical, dead. As long as you can take one hit and like a spit, a little bit of spit and one hit. Lingering Dragon Crest Ring is what you get from that crab. As long as you can take a hit and a, a hit from the spit, you can just keep going when they're spitting. And they'll eventually get staggered and you can do a critical attack, so. Undead bones that yet burn, cast it into the shrine bonfire to boost the recovery provided by the Estus flask. The bonfire cinders are the bones of undead, and a bone that still burns is a fresh cinder, indeed. Before feeding upon death, one must first pray to it. So that's the undead bone shard description. Just seeing if I had anything else to read. Shriving Stone, a gem of infused titanite, also known as Stark Stone. Reverses weapon infusion. Has the benefit of undoing the effects of infusion without something or other. Scroll containing sorcery of the Crystal Sages. Give to a sorcerer to learn sorcerers, sorceries of the sages. As any sorcerer knows, sorcery is a talent, and these sorceries were refined to nurture a very special talent. Golden Scroll, a golden scroll chronicling the vast research of Xanthus scholars. Give to a sorcerer to learn the arts of Ulasil. In the lost land of Ulasil, the sorceries orchestrated light in Ulasil Dudalau. We already did the deep braille divine tome. I think I already read that when we got it. A braille divine tome of the deep belonging to the cathedral yahoos. Sorry, I'm running out of steam. I already did this once. I've already watched this three times. I keep talking about it, and I'm not feeling great anyway today. But, Happy New Year anyway. Dagger Dash to pick up these shinies where the crab was that dropped the lingering dragon crest ring. There's another tree. This uh, is where the giant archer will shoot down. You can kill the crab also by uh, using the giant archer. There's some cold pine, bleh, gold pine resin. I love that. Puts lightning on your weapon. 
I'll probably be using that a lot later on. An ember. Soul of a Nameless Soldier. Young White Branch. Crown of Dusk. And Young White Branch. And that is Crown of Dusk. That leads people to thinking these trees are dusk, I guess. I don't know. Crown of Dusk. Feathered crown bestowed upon the Princess of Ula Seal, land of the ancient golden sorceries. Through the Guardian Elizabeth's blessing, this raises the power and effect of the wearer's magic. The damage suffered by magic attacks rises in tandem. So you'll get more power out of your pyromancy or sorcery or whatever, but you'll also take more damage from pyromancy or sorcery or whatever. So this has really been a magic user's run video. I've gotten two scrolls. I've gotten the Crown of Dusk. I've gotten the Great Swamp Ring. So you could really boost your pyromancy or sorcery. And it'll really help people out that are using sorcery or pyromancy if you watch this video. Doing the dagger dash to see if we uh, missed anything over here. Just the giant tree ant dudes. So I think I'm going to show that now. Show you how to do my soul farming strategy. It's not like not awesome but it's good for like really early once you get here if you come straight here it's pretty good if you have all your soul raising items on it's pretty decent there's probably better better spots and maybe that's why no one else has showed it off but I didn't learn this from anybody I did this on my own so here we go I'll show you how to farm souls early in the game off these giant giant tree dudes. First of all, you got to clear these grooves. It's you start at that bonfire I was just at. You clear these grooves. You can usually sneak up on them and get a backstab. But I'm an idiot. They almost kill me. So that's one of the downsides to this soul farming strategy. But if you can do it right, you can pretty much kill them before they even know you're there. You start at that bonfire, you kill these three gurus, you get 385 souls for these guys, and you'll get more if you have all your soul raising equipment on, but you get at least 385 with the ring. So you kill three of them, that's like a 1, thousand, 1200, whatever, 1200 souls. I'm just looking for items I missed here. This isn't part of the strategy. I just was looking over here to see if I missed anything, which I didn't. You don't have to come over here. Some assholes honking outside. Anyway, start at that bonfire, go on this bridge, look at these giant tree dudes, shoot an arrow at one of them. To pull them over. And then you want to do a plunging attack, and that'll stagger him, and then you can do a critical attack, and they'll be dead. And you get a good amount of souls. So just get them targeted. If you're good, you can drop on him while he's walking over. Plunging attack. Finish him off. You can also do a critical attack. There's two gurus down here, so you gotta watch out for them. But you can uh, get rid of them first, or or whatever, if you want. And they also give 264. But the giant guys, they give 1750 or 1850 or something like that. And that's pretty good right now. You can get a few levels off just farming these guys if you want to try to overpower the early game. So I'll show it a couple more times, just so you can get the strategy. You walk up this ramp, you run up the ramp, or you can use a uh, homeward bone and reset. Or, you can't do that, but you can use a homeward bone if you have a stack of them or something. I don't hit the bonfire because I'm just trying to clear them to, to go get the shiny over there. 
but you pull one to you with the bow after you hit the bonfire, kill the grooves, pull one to you, do a plunging attack. It'll stagger them and you can do a critical attack. Or you can just blender them up. Wait till he comes out. You don't wanna... There you go, plunging attack. And here's the critical attack. Stab him in his face. And he's dead. And he drops Ferris's hat. The first time you kill him. And they do respawn. They don't disappear. Ferris's hat, broad-brimmed leather hat, traditionally used by master archers and especially f favored by forest-dwelling hunters. The name Ferris is said to have belonged to a hero, but is now more widely known as a style of hat. A pretty pimpin' ass hat, if I do say so myself. So you can either run back to the bonfire or use a use a bone. But I kind of like to clear out the grooves and. I don't know. I think a bone is way faster, but you have to have a stack of bones. So either way, you can do it the slow way or the fast way. It's still good. You still get like 1850 per giant. And if you have all all the soul raising stuff on that you can get up to this point, it's pretty good for a few levels at least. Or whatever you're trying to get. Poison arrows. Shoot them in the butt. Here he comes. If you're good, you'll target him and just drop on him right here. If not, you can wait till he's under the bridge. And then he comes back out. But anyway, you do a plunging attack. He didn't get staggered just because he was doing an attack there, but he's dead anyway. Black Bow of Ferris. First time you kill him. So let's take a look at the Black Bow of Ferris. A black longbow named after a hero of old, known for the unusual stance from which it is fired, has a longer range than standard bows, but successful uses requires a trained, dexterous hand. The skill is Ferris's triple shot. Swiftly attacks, swiftly knocks three arrows and shoots three, three times. Anyway, let's go see what the shiny is over here. Where the giant tree dudes were. Poison gem, alright. I might put that on my, uh... Nah, I got sharp, so I can't do that, but it'd be cool to have poison on cell sword uh, twin blades, but I'm doing sharp. It's way more damage, probably. Here's another shiny. So anyway, that was the my little early game soul farming trick. And I get grabbed by Gru. It's scratching my eyes out, ripping my head off. And we're almost out of time here, so, but we're also almost done backtracking in the swamp. So next time we'll be definitely making progress in the catacombs. We may hang out in the swamp for like five minutes. We may turn in the scrolls, but that's about it. We'll, it'll be all action in the catacombs next time, I promise. At least 75% of the video will be catacombs action. And I'll, I'm going to be doing two, every other video I do is going to be Dark Souls 3 until we get done with it. Just because it's been taking so long, I'm not doing live streams for five hours. So it's taken five times as long to do these because I can only do them an hour at a time. So I'm at least going to try to do two a week or at least every other video is going to be Dark Souls 3 until we're done with it. Ooh, there's Dark Wraith. Let's have a fight with him to end the video. Get the backstab in the front. Slug tries to join the party. Dark Wraith puts the shield up. I get kicked. He tries to grab me. I get behind him. Backstab. He's almost dead. I hit him while he's down, but he doesn't die. He jumps back. And I backstab him in the front for the win.
and he drops the damn dark sword. Hell yeah. So let's take a look at that. Dark sword. Pitch black straight sword of the dark wraith, survivor of the land swallowed by darkness. The Dark Wraiths were the first Red Orb invaders and originators of a unique sword technique inspired by their thick, broad blades. Skill is stomp, use one's weight to lunge forward with a low stance and increased poise. So that's pretty cool. I got almost all the Dark Wraith stuff now just from killing Dark Wraiths. I think I have the chest, the mask, the sword, and maybe the gloves. <clears throat> And thank God I'm almost done with this two hours of commentary that I only get an hour out of. <laughs> and this is like, whatever. Fuck it. I'm done complaining. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, like if you have, and share and tell a friend, please. And I'll see you next time. Peace.